Um, six seats, seven candidates. Uh, based on the primary results, odds are very high that you'll be on the Court of Common Pleas very soon. Since the spring, how has that, what have you done to prepare? How has that changed your thought process about the job and the role? Well, there's no guarantees, uh, even statistically. But I still, um, I mean, I'm, I'm still working hard to, to get the seat. Um, I'm still meeting all, as many residents of Luzerne County as I can, um, because I still think that's part of the, pro the process to get, to get the job. And I think the, the, you know, the residents of Luzerne County deserve that right now. So that's part of the process. Um, I can't really look at the details of the, the budget until I get there, so I think that would be something that's, you know, that I'd have to do once I'm there and that I actually like to do. So uh, I think it's presumptuous, it would be presumptuous of me to do that um, right now <laughs> until I get the job. Um, when, um, before I had my sons, I didn't move a, a crib into my house, and uh, so I, I don't think that I would move that crib into the house yet. Um, beginning next year, uh, I'm going to ask you a couple of home rule questions because, you know, if, if elected and, and uh, taking that office next year, um, he told me not to lock it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. You warned me. Would you not to lock Also in 2012, that the uh, county's new home rule form of government would be put in place. And uh, a couple questions related to that. Uh, the candidates for that office are wondering about the judiciary and, and if it would support efforts to include the judiciary's personnel within the ethics and personnel codes of the Home Rule Charter. That seems to be a, a a concern of some people, and it's not a requirement, obviously, that the state doesn't require. But do you have personal leanings on how that would apply or not apply to court personnel? I think the court personnel have to be, the judiciary has to be a separate branch of government. I think that the, um, the ethics bylaws should be reviewed extensively once the new judges become part of the, uh, the uh, judiciary and I think um, it should be a cooperative it should be done cooperatively perhaps with the new uh, with the new county council and I think that's I think what should be done and uh, along the same lines uh, with home rule uh, a lot of their emphasis is going to be on cutting costs containing costs Right. Uh, some people would like to know uh, if you'd be willing to share tip staffs and clerks with other, other judges to reduce costs. Uh, would you need a tip staff if there were no ongoing jury trials in your courtroom? Well, once again, and so I think, you know, I think tip staff, even that word is, I think tip staffs are, should be functioning even, even now as more administrative assistants. I, I think that's what they should be doing. So. Does a judge need a secretary and an administrative assistant? Probably with the kind, the the um, the amount of work that has to be done. The the backlog in Luzerne County is extraordinary. Now, until I get there, um, I can't tell you if it's absolutely something that needs to be needs to be. I suspect yes, but. I, I can't tell you for sure, but I suspect yes. And uh, all the candidates we talked to uh, talked to us about their, their experience. They feel that they're fair and impartial. What qualities other than, than those uh, do you think bring, that you bring to the bench that would make you a good judge? My, um, well, I've been, you know, I've been a litigator for 25 years. I've handled complex civil cases for the bulk of my career. Um, I've been a public servant for 25 years in a variety of um, a variety of of, uh, of different organizations, and by the way, in a lot of leadership positions, very few um, very very few organizations have I gotten involved in that they haven't put me on the executive committee. By the way, almost immediately. <laughs> um, 
so uh, whether I like it or not. So um, mostly I like it. Um, and, um, and I think that's, um, that I think that says something about, maybe, but I think it says something about my strength of, of character. I think uh, one thing that um, I found is that, uh, was that, when, is that I, what I bring, what I think I'll bring to the job is that I'm also approachable. I've had, um, yesterday, someone came to, up to me and said, look it, I'm, I'm on jury duty. And uh, here's, I, I like to talk to you um, when you become judge. I said, not when. <laughs> you know, you can't say, you know, if. I said, say if right now. But um, about how I think it can be done better. And I said, I think that, you know, you have to tell me that. Someone has already come to me who I went to elementary school <laughs> to tell me what they think can be done better in one of the other departments. And I think one of, maybe one of the problems that ha has been is that some of the judges haven't necessarily always been approachable. And I think um, because of that lack of approachability, we've had some of the problems we've had in the past. Let me ask you, I mean, I, to take nothing away from your experience and, and, and what you've done, I mean, you could be a baseball player for 15 years and stepping behind the plate to be the umpire is entirely different. Absolutely. Two feet, two feet away. Absolutely. So as a, as a judge, if you were to become a judge, um, what, what do you think is the, the appropriate uh, way to, uh, I'm trying to get a sense of how you'd be in, in the courtroom, to treat jurors, to treat um, attorneys that you don't think are being professional. What's the appropriate way to, to deal with the people that are going to be in the room? Well, the appropriate way to deal with it, you know, you have to, you, the appropriate way to deal well, with Well, let's say a, 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 you think a, um, a, an attorney's being unprofessional. How do, you, how do you deal with that? You have to call them up to, to, to the bench, and you have to tell them that's not appropriate. And, and that's the way to do it. And, and jurors, I mean, um, I think you, I, you, yeah, I think you've alluded to that in the, in the temperament about being open. But for if I would get a juror, it's totally new to me. What's this? How do you how do you deal with jurors? How do you how do you um, how do you treat them? I think you have to treat the jurors for them. When I was a young uh, when I was a young lawyer, the very first year I was a lawyer, I was a witness in a case, and it's very different. To be a uh, to be a lawyer and also to be a witness, so um, in this very you know you're sitting when you're sitting as a witness and talking to the juror you know and basically talking to the jurors. I mean every every role that there there is there is very different. So I you know I found um, I found uh, what you know as you watch the judges, it's very important that they explain every everything that goes on in the trial to the jurors because they don't know. You know, for them, every single thing that, that goes on is very brand new. And it's important that they understand what happens because otherwise, you know, they are completely in the dark. And so I think, so they have a very good framework for what goes on. They know, they, they have to, um, they have to under, they need to know what, what goes on during a trial. Um, the last trial I was in, jury instructions were given before closings as opposed to after closings. I mean, I know I'm giving you, I mean, I'm being a little technical here, but I thought, well, that, that was a really good way to handle it because, jur you know, lawyers will go through their closings and then they go through and then sometimes, um, then the ju you know, judges go through instructions. And then um, I, I thought, wow, that was a better way to go through it so then, so that the jurors could take the instructions and then use uh, the, the lawyer's closing to use the instructions as, the, as the, almost a playbook. Who was the judge in the trial? That was Judge Manjur. And I thought, it was a, he, I thought he did a good job. Is that the judge's discretion? Yes. In most cases? Yes. And he said, he actually said, I haven't tried this before. <laughs> he, said, I, he said, I haven't tried this before. Well, while I have a chance. <laughs> but he, and he, he, he didn't say that, yeah, but he did. Uh, so, I, and this is a shout out to him, but he did a nice job. So, yeah. Well, he's an approachable judge, too. He's the, he, and, he and Lou Wetzel both, I don't know why, maybe because they're in their position or their situation, but they're both very approachable people. Yeah. I, I, since they've been on the bench. So. Right. 
Well, that approachability is, I think, works well, and it worked well, I think it works well with the jurors. So, and I, I think as long as the jurors know that they can speak, you know, they, uh, I think that the jurors find that comforting, you know, and I think that makes it easier for them to do their jobs. So they know, for example, the jurors frequently have questions. If they know they can go to the judge with questions, it makes for less problems and, and by the way, less appellate issues later if they can ask the judge questions during, during their deliberations. Can, can you give us uh, an example or two of uh, cases that you've been involved in that you're particularly proud of or you, th you think you handled particularly well? I had a, I had a, one of the cases that I've had, I had a, a complex products liability case with a, a little girl who um, had, well, she was 14 at the time. She's not that little now, but uh, she had a severe, um, a severe burn injury. And um, I was told that, that, she, um, that I, she could not, uh, it was a case that would be very difficult to, to win. And, um, and uh, there was a, and, and there was a, a warnings case uh, that the, the company itself, it, it was a hard case, let me just go there, but um, it was, we were able to get a substantial verdict for her in the federal, federal court at the time. It was uh, one, I believe it was the highest verdict that we had in federal court um, with Judge Nealon. Um, that was one of my cases that I was very, very proud of. I had a, a whistleblowing case um, that came to a settlement, but I was very proud of it. Um, and that was in federal court also. So uh, those are some cases that I'm... Uh, without getting into the nitty-gritty, the case involving the 14-year-old girl, what was, it, what was the hurdle that people said you're not going to get very far with? Well, it was a can that blew up. It was a chemical, so it was a, a chemical explosion. And um, it was a warning case, so, you know, it was... Difficult evidence to do, difficult, difficult technical things to deal with? Yeah. Or? There were many technical, uh, technical, pro, you know, technical issues and warrant, you know, a variety of experts that were involved. And uh, but she, um, and it was critical. I mean, for her, it was uh, life changing. This verdict. She used it to. Um, she teaches autistic children now. She, um, it, um, she got her master's degree. Paid for her twin sister to get her master's degree with the settlement money. I mean, it was. It was life changing, and her scarring. She has third degree burns over 50 percent of her body, so it was a very life changing for her. The ver the the money. Some of the some cases, I mean, you know, as a judge, you're, you're feeling all things and you know, many different things. And some of those technical cases can be, I mean, they've been described in previous endorsement court meetings. They can be very daunting. There I mean, could be anything, obviously. Well, sure, and it, it, there was it was um, there was a lot of motions that had to be filed during that, and motions to be decided by the by the judge also. <laughs> so, have you uh, lectured or taught uh, legal courses? I had um I was um, I taught Act One Twenty, so that was uh, through uh, Lackawanna Junior College. And that was some. There were some excessive force issues in that class, in that in that course material. And have you received uh, honors, prizes, awards, or other forms of recognition relevant to to law? Well, I um, I was a governor's appointee to um, um, oh gosh, we studied uh, voting for HAVA, the Help America Vote Act, and I think. That's because of my interest in voting issues, and I, I consider that an honor. <laughs> and uh, has any of your legal work been, been uh, cited in, in legal or law reviews? Have you done any writing of that nature yourself? Well, my that case I told you about that that case that, that went up, it, parts of it went up to the Third Circuit that that one particular case, but not law review. And uh, do you currently, do, uh, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions related to experience, uh, asking these of all the candidates to kind of flush out more in my mind uh, experience levels and in what areas. Uh, do you currently devote full time to the practice of law? Yes. 
And how much time, how many hours per week normally? I'm a full-time lawyer. I own my own business. Uh, would you consider yourself an experienced trial lawyer? Yes. Um, within the past five years, did you appear in court, would you say regularly, occasionally? This is the last five years. Regularly, occasionally, or not at all? Regularly. And if you had to break it down, again, these questions all pertain to the last five years or so. What percentage of your litigation was civil versus criminal? Um, primarily civil. But the rules of evidence, just, just so you know, are the same for criminal and civil cases. So 90-10, 99-1? And again, if you could break down percentages, federal court versus state courts or other forums that you're in. I'm, pr I'm that's. Maybe 60, 40, 70, 30. In 70, 30, maybe 70 county, 30 federal. I'm a lot in the federal court. <laughs> and uh, within the last five years, can you give us a number of, approximate number of civil jury trials you have tried to verdict? I can't. I haven't, um, I can't. I don't know offhand. Ballpark, closer to 1, 10, 20, 100? Not a hundred, <laughs> not twenty. Um, I probably closer to five. And uh, yeah, civil jury trials. That is civil bench trials in the last five years. Um, I put those in the same category. Okay. Five total. Uh, civil cases that have been settled in the last five. Years. Oh. Civil trials that have been settled, that's countless. Oh. I mean, that's, you know, I, that's what I, that's all, that's what I do. That's uh, over 100, okay. over maybe 200 in the last five years. And, uh, yeah, probably closer to 200. Hearings, uh, civil or criminal, that you've had before district justice in the last five years? Mm -hmm. uh, probably closer to 20. And just a couple more scenarios in the last five years. Any cases presented before a U.S. bankruptcy judge? Um, no. I don't think so. I've had clients who have had, I mean, I have, I've had clients who've had bankruptcies. So I've had, like, you know, I've had matters that have had uh, bankruptcy offsprings. <laughs> so sometimes you have to file motions, you have to file, sometimes I've had defendants who filed bankruptcy, so we have to file motions to lift the stay. So there's bankruptcy, um, you know, there's parts of your cases that sometimes have, uh, you have to deal with bankruptcy. Uh, any uninsured uh, motorist cases that you've tried in the last five years? Oh, God, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the nature of my, my practice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and obviously, we're going to ask the same questions of the other candidates. You probably have a feel a little bit for their experience. Is there anything that I didn't ask about that you think reflects your experience compared to theirs, whether your numbers are higher or lower, or what have you? Uh, I'm not. I mean, you don't have I have. I don't know what. I don't know what their practice consists of. So, uh, have you ever withdrawn from a case because you disagreed with a client? Um. Have I ever? I'd have to think about that. Sometimes. Um. I'm sure I have, but not recently. But I'm sure I have. Um, have you ever been sued by a client? Um, once, when I was at my former employer's, uh, one of the other lawyers, clients sued all of the lawyers. I received an affidavit of non-involvement 
um, because I was not involved. So um, to, to indicate that I was not involved in the case. So I don't know how you want to characterize that. Um, so that was that was it. So I guess not. Other than that, uh, have you ever been sued? Well, I think you're all well aware of the case that my former employer <laughs> um, has filed had had filed against me. And where is that case now? That was settled last October. Can you comment on it though? at all. So, I mean, I'm not sure if we are all familiar. I, I, I vaguely know what you're referring to. A former employer has suggested I, um, that you took some things that belong to the firm. Oh, well, no, then that's inaccurate. So okay. I, well, let me, I definitely want to, yes. I want to set this record straight, so let me do that. Um, I, left my, um, I left my old firm, firm in October of 2008, um, on February 22nd. Uh, four, da four days later, my old, uh, my ex-employer sued me. Um, it was um, it was a it, that is a simple that was a simple business separation that was the settlement that was con that that happened. Um, there was a there was a flash drive and and I took contact information from that um, and that is what um, was part of the lawsuit that he filed against me. That case has been resolved. That there's no allegation of wrongdoing. Um, what I did was not immoral, unethical. There's no issue or problem with that. Um, and you can ask me anything else you want about that. So, because I really would like to make sure that 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 is not. Uh, if that's a, anybody has any questions about that. Well, so so how was it resolved? That that case was that case was settled, settled. and there yes. And, and, and the, the contact information that you took was personal contacts. It and was a, it was client it was a client information so that I could contact the clients. In retrospect, how would you how would you define what went wrong there? A misunderstanding or? I when I left, uh, clients came with me and. I, I believe my former employee was upset that the clients came with me. Okay. Um, has your license to practice law ever been suspended or revoked? Never. Can I go back to the case just so I understand that? Um, what was the settlement, can you say? I can't say. Okay. I just wanted to ask. Yeah. Um, if uh, serving on the bench, uh, I'm wondering some of the, the nuts and bolts things. Uh, under what circumstances can the courts seal court files or court proceedings? If, if you're a judge, you're on the bench, what are the circumstances that would allow you to do that or, or would you be inclined to do that? Well, if there's a, if it's a, if there's a minor involved potentially, um, if, you know, that's obviously sometimes a delicate situation. Um, if um, if the parties are, are agreed to it, um, and of course, you know, those are those are situations that are by you know by agreement. Uh, those are two situations I could see. And uh, along the same lines, uh, if you're in the job doing the job, what factors would you consider in granting uh, and setting bail uh, amounts for defendants? What, what do you believe is the primary consideration in setting bail? I think you have to, every case is different, so I think that, it, I mean, you have to, I, I think there are so many factors that would go into that, that you'd have to know each case. I mean, obviously the type of crime, you know, the crime itself, the violence of the crime, the uh, chance that the, uh, the offender could flee, all those things would have to be a part of the decision-making process. Generally, the way things are handled, generally the way things are handled now, is that fair? I think generally, yeah. And uh, what are the issues uh, regarding the, the alternative sentencing for nonviolent offenders? What things would go through your mind when deciding whether whether a person qualifies for that? 
the ARD type of process? I'm or any alternative sensing. I guess there are more options out there all the time to keep people out of the more expensive prisons, et cetera. I think it obviously it depends on the. Per I mean, obviously it depends on the. I mean, it depends on the purpose. It depends on the sentence. It depends on the, you know, the the sentencing guidelines. It depends on the pre-sentence reports. It depends on our purpose in in the. Uh, it, it depends on our purpose in that particular criminal, um, with that particular sentencing. You know, every sentencing has a particular purpose. Every type of crime, when someone's found guilty of it, you have a particular purpose when you sentence someone, right? We have deterrence. We have, we have, uh, you know, you have deterrence. You have taking someone off the street. Right? I mean, you have different purposes for each sentence. So, it depends. That's, that's interesting. Can you flush that out? More well, for me, because I guess I never thought about it in that respect. But, right. Well, well, what are some of the other we have, we have, we have, we have. Deterrence. When you have, you know, when you sentence people, you have deter. You have. You want to sentence that person for what they've done wrong. You want to deter others from. Um, you have. You want to deter others from committing that very same crime. So, you know, those are things that you take into account. For public safety. Of, of course. Um, do you believe residents of Luzerne County have adequate access to legal help? Well, we have the Northeast uh, Penn Legal Services. You have um, you have the PD's office. Um, it's could there be more? There can always be, there can always be more. Well, I, I guess to put the question around, do you feel there are barriers for some people that prevent them from getting maybe the help that they? There's, there's, uh, there's always. I mean, there's always barriers. I mean, there's never, there's never enough. I think there's, there's, we have a good, we have good frameworks in place, but we have limited resources, and we have to act within those resources. There's always budget concerns. We have to be careful. So the, we have a, we have a, you know, we have a push and pull. So we just don't have unlimited resources. So that's a, that, that's what we all have to be mindful of. Uh, during the primary campaign, if I, if I remember correctly, you pledged to take no contributions from lawyers that you're sticking with. I have uh, stuck with that. <laughs> <laughs> have you been offered? Have you oh, sure. Even yeah. since then? Oh, God, yes. Even more so since then. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, what about, to get into it in more detail, what about the spouse of an, uh, a lawyer? They've been offered money from the spouses of lawyers. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I have. Do you think it's, it's some, sometimes sincere? I mean, or maybe oh, God, sincere. yes. Sure, I mean, I know spouses of lawyers well, you know, well independently. And have some of them have been, you know, well, I know you, you know, I know you. Actually, some of them said, I know you before you knew my husband. And I said, well, I can't, I can't how can I be, I, I, it's hard to, it, how can I say this? Yeah, I know I knew Leslie before I knew Dave in this case, but uh, so I said I, I have to kind of make it blanket so it it's fair. What about uh, employees of a law firm who aren't necessarily attorneys? Do you have the same sort of concerns there? Or? I I don't. I mean I I can't. And I I, I haven't looked through a list, but I don't think too many employees of law firms have offered me money. And uh, another question about process, I guess, if, if elected and you're doing the job, um, recusal, as I, as I understand it, is discretionary. It's up to a judge to decide whether he or she uh, should hear the case. Uh, if, you refuse, if you refuse to grant a recusal request, would you be inclined to place a statement on the record explaining your reason? Is that necessary? Is it an extra step? I think it depends on the situation. So I think I'd have to see. I, I think I think every situation is different. So probably, but because most most recusal recusals would have a reason, and I think probably the court the you know people would probably be entitled to know that reason. Uh, questions from the group at this point? I just had one, Lisa. You mentioned at the top of the 
conversation that you, you stayed out there all summer and yeah. and I saw you. I did three, <laughs> three trips bizarre. I was there because I like pancakes. You were there because you were probably talking to people. What did people say to you? I mean, when you were here in the spring, everybody, all the Kennedys came in and talked about how the bench needed to be, you know, after everything that had happened recently. Did anybody say anything to you that you hadn't heard? surprise you of concern that people had? No, they were the same, the same messages over and over again. And, and of course, um, you know, the same, it was the uh, same messages. Uh, they were happy, you know, I hate to, I mean, they were happy to see some women get elected. I heard that, um, a lot of that. Um, people, you know, were um, very nice, you know, that, you know, um, who knew me, of course. Um, heard a lot after um, Mark Chevrolet's sen sentencing, of course. That was a big, um, big thing before and after um, at the bazaars. Um, that, was, that was a lot of it. Anything else? Is there anything that we haven't asked you about that you particularly want to mention or emphasize or questions you wish we would ask? <laughs> No, I mean, I just, I mean, I, I, I'll, I've, um, you know, I've, I've been all over the place, and um, you know, I'll work hard. Um, that I'll do, and um, I think that's what people want to want to hear, and I think that they'll have that with me. Well, again, I want to thank you very much for being here to talk with us, and I also want to um, point out that you were kind enough to switch schedules with us when, when uh, we, we made a mistake. Friday's going to be a busy day, so thank you for being willing to. That's okay. Um.